It is Wednesday, July 27th in the MLB, and I'm Austin from Calling a Shot. And I'm Morgan from Calling a Shot. And we are back with our three best picks of the day, our favorite game pick, player prop, no one first inning, and our hit streak props coming your guys' way. Guys, just do us a real quick favor and hit that subscribe button. Welcome if you are new and maybe stumble upon this channel for the first time. You know, Austin and I can't can't do it without you guys in the community. Dropping likes on the video, mashing that subscribe button. We appreciate you guys for sure. Yeah, thank you so much. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Let's hop into a recap like yesterday. Always being transparent with you guys. A two-in-one day. Kirby goes under five and a half Ks. Now, we got a little bit lucky, though, but we I was telling you guys he was on kind of a pitch count, and they were controlling his innings, and lo and behold, they yanked him after 50 pitches, and he only gets, I think, four Ks. So we'll cash that one. Nerfy Nation didn't really have to sweat too hard for that one, waving the flags once again. And then, uh, Logan, every time you pick an under, I swear you get hit with a grand slam, which you can't control. Grand slams are so unlucky. If you were to go and just bet – a game to end have a grand slam you get like crazy odds so i'm gonna i'm gonna ban you for betting unders anymore but either way our hit streak day one if you've been watching our on instagram or on tiktok or on twitter i always do you know a fun little bit and ben attendee gets it done i'll talk about my uh, day two player which we're rolling over all the winnings we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second but as like logan said hit that subscribe button odds jam parlay live if you want to go check that out top link in the description podcast also live at 10 a.m logan and i talk all about the mlb trade deadline a couple guys like juan soto that we could be seeing moved what our thoughts are on them and where we see them potentially heading definitely check that out we might even talk about a couple gay guys in the video today but i got nothing else logan what do you have for the people today yeah, I like how I like how you tease the the podcast, which also mentions this guy. We're going to the Reds versus Marlins game. And I'm taking the Reds minus a half in the first five innings, minus one fifteen odds on on DraftKings is probably your your best value. As Austin showing here, a pretty standard across the books from one twenty uh, to one fifteen is is about what the odds are right now. Look, guys, Castillo, Luis Castillo, is he making his last start as a Red? Who knows, right? Does he get dealt at the trade deadline? Watch our podcast to find out our, our takes on this. But Castillo, what I do know is Castillo, one and run in each of his last three starts, he's been really solid. It's hard to find faults in this game. Coming in with a 3.6 uh, home ERA, which is a little bit higher than what he's been doing recently. But he's been he's been a really solid pitcher recently. And what I also know is that that Marlins offense is not a juggernaut, guys. Right? Miami's only scored uh, Miami scored two runs or fewer in seven out of their last ten games. You can look at what they did last night. They won ugly, right? They the Marlins won two to one. It was my lean. I was almost my game pick, but I just couldn't trust the fish enough. They did get it done. But look, well, also what I know, Miami twenty first in, in batting average on the road and twenty fourth in OPS on the road. I know, I know as quickly as as they can score two runs, you know they can also get shut out. And it's what the Marlins do. Now, who's pitching uh, for who's pitching for the Marlins today? It's going to be Garrett, right? 3.51 road ERA and a 1.02 whip on the road. Young pitcher, he's he's been pretty solid. I mean, he's a left-handed pitcher. I, I hope that the you know Reds can bring the bats. They're about middle of the pack against lefties. But also, what I do know is the Reds, ninth in batting average at home, eighth in OPS at home. So they're a good home offense. Didn't play like it yesterday, but today they're due a bounce-back offensive performance. They're going to give Luis Castillo some run support. And at the end of the day, I trust the hit Reds hitters more. You know, Garrett... Being a young pitcher, he's he's hopefully going to make a mistake, right? If, if he makes a mistake or two in the first five innings, that's all we want. We want Luis Castillo to hold down the fort. And Reds are going to have a one-run uh, advantage through five. That's all we need to cash this bet. I believe in the Reds. I'm not, I'm not trusting. I'm not going to any bullpen garbage. That's why I am taking the first five, pitcher, starting pitcher versus starting pitcher. Uh, but Austin, what do you got for, for today? Yeah, so like I said yesterday, and I think maybe some people were confused about our new segment, the hit streak, and what I meant by rolling over the fun. So yesterday, like I said, and I'll hop into uh, my pick. It's going to be Austin Riley. It's an early starter. It's minus 230 to get a hit. He should get one. He's been on a pretty good hitting streak. Hopefully he gets it done. But what I was saying was that Ben Attendee, we only put $10 on him for day one, and it netted us about $14.17. That wasn't the profit. We didn't make $14. We didn't get that great of odds on him. But we do have $14.17 to play with, and we're throwing it all in Austin Riley. And if he can get it done, I don't remember the payout, probably around like 19 total dollars. And we'd probably put that on the next guy for day three. So Austin Riley's my pick. Hopefully we can go to day three. Coming for you, Joe DiMaggio. Watch out. But Logan's pick, and this will be his final one if he can't cash one. He's going Brandon Nimmo again from yesterday. He's picked two guys, go 0 for 4. Look, Logan, I'm, I, I'm sure you understand. If you don't get a guy to get a hit today, you're going, you're, you're getting in, tossed into the graveyard. But either way, we're going to move into my player prop, though. I'm going to a guy by the name of Zach Gallen of the Arizona Diamondbacks to get over 17 and a half outs. Currently minus 140 on DraftKings. We see Sarper Books really like this at minus 184. 
one of the reasons that I'm on this one. But start with Gallon. I know some people might not have Alex props. I know if you have like a prize picks or I think if you have like prize picks or maybe even underdog fantasy, they'll probably have a fantasy score. I'd probably prefer a fantasy score for Zach Gallon more so than pivoting to his strikeouts. I believe his strikeouts is five and a half. Sometimes Gallon's pitch for contact. Sometimes he's striking out, guys. So I'm kind of iffy on that. That's why I'm kind of just leaning on outs first and then probably go to fantasy points or fantasy score if you can do that. Now, let's talk about Gallon. He's hit this in two straight starts versus the Giants, one this year, one last year, through six and two-thirds innings pitched earlier this year, I believe back in June, end of June, early July. And then he threw six innings pitched last year. Now, I put the outs because some people might not know. To get outs, you obviously have to pitch far into games. You have to get six innings pitched, which would be 18 outs. And so he had 20 and 18. Now, he's also coming off. You know, as the, his best start of the season, which was his first post All Star break, he gave through seven innings pitched, seven Ks, only two hits allowed versus the Washington Nationals. And like I said, this is his second post All Star break start. I don't really like touching all those guys that are starting their first game post All Star break because you never really know if they're trying to limit those guys' pitches after being off for maybe an extra day or two. But he's right in the full swing of things in a normal season, and he's thrown six plus innings pitched in, in nine of his last fifteen starts, which six plus innings pitched is what we need today. And we also look at it: the Diamondbacks did use five bullpen arms yesterday. So they're on a team that necessarily, you know, has the healthiest bullpen, not the best bullpen either. So I think they're going to need Gallon to go pretty far in this game. Now, it's not like they are playing back, back, back. They actually do have tomorrow off. So if they, Gallon does get into some trouble, they could yank him. But I don't see that happening. Gallon's been very solid at home, a 3.36 ERA, 0.93 whip at home this year. It's been pretty solid. And we look at the batters that he'll be facing in the Giants. Here's a couple guys. Jack Peterson, 1 for 13 versus uh, Gallon. You saw Wilmer Flores, 0 for 8. Austin Slater, great first name, still 0 for 3. And Brandon Belt, 3 for 15. Now, the Giants are always going to mess around with their lineup. You never know what they're starting. But I'd imagine at least three, probably all four of these guys are going to be in their lineup. So these guys are going to struggle against Gallon. It's going to be hard to get base runners continually up on them. I see an over-under right around 7.5. So I do think Gallon can make work of this lineup. He doesn't need to pitch a gem. That's the good thing with pitching out. He doesn't need to pitch a gem. You just got to avoid those. 30 pitch innings that really screw over a lot of outs bets. So I'm going to rely on Mr. Zach Gallon. I really do think he gets it done. So we're taking this over 17 and a half outs today as my player prop of the day. But look, I believe you know what time it is. It's going to be Nerf Nation time. That's what the people come for. And we're going to be waving these flags, waving the flag. We've been on, I, I don't really want to jinx it, but I think we've had three or four straight Nerfies. I'll check and maybe go back into the, the logs starting tomorrow if we do hit another one. But today, we're going to the Rays Orioles. We're taking the no run first inning, minus 110 on BetMGM. Now, for people that took this one yesterday, you can thank Shane McClanahan. He's an ally of your free nation. He did it in the All-Star game. He did it yesterday, too, allowing a Cedric Mullins home run. But today, he's not pitching. Thank the Lord. On the mound for the Orioles will be Tyler Wells. It's been pretty solid. 15-4 and four on no run first innings this year. That includes... 3-0 versus the Tampa Bay Rays. Back when the Rays had, you know, more consistent hitters at the top of their club, like Manuel Margot and those guys, we obviously know Margot is still out. Now, they likely will get a guy like Gandhi Diaz probably leading off. He's like 0 for 8 versus uh, Tyler Wells. You might see G-Man Troy at the top of the lineup. The Rays are kind of kind of iffy on who they start at 1-2-3, but we still do think the Rays, I mean, they are 8th in first inning runs. This is a capable offense, but they haven't scored a run, knock on wood, in five straight first innings. So I think Mr. Wells gave me those first three outs. Who's on the mound for the for the Rays today, Logan? Yeah, the Rays are throwing out Drew Rasmussen, and he's quietly had a really good year in, in Nerfies, right? He's 14-2 and two on Nerfies this year, and that includes a Nerfie versus the Orioles already. Baltimore, we know this, 30th and first inning runs. Back of the pack, uh, first inning offense for sure. Look, if the Baltimore Orioles want to go and, and get back-to-back -back Nerfies, I challenge that, you know, I'll, I'll live with that all day long. Pulled some of their splits for their top half of the order uh, versus Rasmussen. Uh, Mullins, 0 for 5 versus Rasmussen. Ryan Mountcastle, our boy, 1 for 4 versus Rasmussen. So no one's absolutely, uh, you know, killing killing Rasmussen. The over-under set to 8. I, I really do feel feel good about this one. I, I think it should be a low-scoring affair, especially in the first inning. Nerfie Nation, let's find those flags again. Yeah, let's keep waving these flags like we've been doing all post All Star break. So those are our three plays of the day: Rays, Orioles, Nerfie, Reds minus zero point five in the first five, and then we'll be taking Zach Gallon over as a seventeen and a half outs plus our hit streak props. Now, of course, since we always want to reward people for listening to the parlay of the day, so they don't have to go over to Odd Jam and check it out. These are our parlay. We've had a little bit of a cold streak, but we're going Red Sox and Rangers both to win, just taking their money lines, plus 234. We know the Mariners have been super hot. We know the Guardians, and we know the Red Sox have been super cold. 
But I think both these two teams get the, get the, get it done today for us. So let us know your favorite bets down below in the comments. Check out our podcast. I'll put it up on the screen once it is live at 10 a.m. Eastern time. We appreciate you guys as always. Austin Logan, we're signing out. See you guys again Thursday.